Hey guys, this is Generic Person here, back with another video, and today we will be reviewing Linux. Or well, we'll be reviewing Ubuntu and Fedora on this laptop. So we'll do a comparison, and I'll post information about I'll post post the specs. Sorry about this laptop, like um the RAM, hard drive, and maybe a bit of information about the CPU. Heads up, and a bit of a spoiler, it's not all going to be that powerful. Well, not too good. I mean, this is a two-year-old laptop, 2017, made by Dell. And in spawn 15, 3565. Okay, so we're going to be trying Ubuntu first. And, yeah. So right now we have elementary OS running up. So we're just going to restart this. And here we go. So yep, I'll be right back once we get to the boot menu. Yeah, that didn't take too long. Okay, um, so now we're just going to select it. We're going to start Ubuntu. Um, um, okay. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 stop. Wait, there's some I want to, like, review because I never saw this before. Um, this is Ubuntu 19.04, I believe, but I never saw this before. Um, let's try that option. For some reason... Okay, you can see it better now, but... Okay. So, don't mind the fan, please. Don't mind the fan. <laughs> um, is this an option that says try Ubuntu right here without installing... And it's like safe graphics. I never saw that before. Okay. Uh, let's try. Let's just try without installing. We will not be installing any Linux distributions, so yeah. So I've had Ubuntu installed on this laptop before, and Elementary OS is based on Ubuntu, but why not we install? Why not try it out again? Okay, so then we also taste the fail taste. We'll, we'll test the fail safe graphics mode, sorry. And yeah, so and the version of Fedora I have here is a uh, for oops. The latest stable version of Fedora 30. And yep, and here we go. Uh this looks a bit different. Um, okay, the install icon looks a bit different. Yes, I have tried Ubuntu 19.04 out before. It's just, there's a bit of differences. Differences, sorry. Live patch? No. What the? What the heck? I don't think I've ever seen this before. What? The heck? Just lower the brightness here. Ninety-three percent. This battery drains fast. So, yeah, and Ubuntu um requires two gigs of RAM to operate. It requires. Uh, 25 gigabytes of hard free hard drive space, I think, and it requires a 2 gigahertz or better CPU. We barely meet the specifications for the uh, CPU because this thing's clocked at like 2 gigahertz, so yeah. Okay, so um, such a Ubuntu. I need to get Wi Fi. No, I did not mean to do that. Yeah, so I would select my Wi-Fi. Uh, connect. I'll be right back in just a sec. Okay, so we should be connected. And we should have a relatively good swing since the wire is right there. Okay, so uh, 
Yeah, if I had a proper video camera, then I probably wouldn't have been using that. Any new changes? Okay, so now the upside, what I like about Ubuntu is that, well, number one, first, ouch, number one is its theme, and I accidentally hit my foot against the bed here, so I do like its theme because it just looks amazing, you know, and actually, you know what, let's get a, uh, let's get a mouse thing here, you know, sort of take a bit. For some reason, I've just become clumsy all of a sudden with a generic mouse. So, that's good, right? So, so yeah, um, so the theme does look nice. I do like the dock on the side, and the icons just. It's a better theme than ever since the beginning of the previous theme that just shipped with Ubuntu 18.04. Looks very, very nice. The downsides of Ubuntu, but before we get to that, another upside. Well, actually, let's get onto the downsides. One downside is can they please stop shipping Amazon? I know it's like a web app thing, but can they still please stop shipping it? Sure, you can do a minimal install. I'll even show you right here. No, I'm not going to be installing anything. I'm just going to show y'all. Oh, it's a shortcut, apparently. Oh. Still, can they please get rid of that? That's like one of the things I don't like about Ubuntu. You can do a minimal install, and as I've done in the past, I've installed Ubuntu in the past, and you can do a minimal install, minimal installation, it's just minimal stuff, and Amazon doesn't come with it, but there's still some stuff that may require me that I need to do stuff, but really, a minimal installation, I could still live with a minimal installation. That's another good thing. At least I could just choose... A minimal installation because I don't always need everything. And second, okay, one main downside is the desktop. Ever since they upgraded the file manager um, to what 3.31 or something, 3.30. Um, oh, no, that's not in there. Here we go. This is 3.32, but I think since 3.30, ever since they upgraded to 3.30, um, Nautilus, the file manager here, it got rid of like, um, when being able to render desktop icons, and so it's a bit quirky, and so while, while we do get a bit of functionality back, uh, it's still kind of quirky, in my opinion, because, say, uh, let's open up a text editor. So, if we open up a text editor, and say, let's uh, save a file to the desktop, right? Just go to the desktop, um, name the document, oh, um, oops, uh, test. Um, so then we'll just, or, oh, let's make this like a bit of a wheel, oops, media keys. Um, so, we named this so it's like, I don't know, very important document, 
Hold on. Very important document, right? So let's rename it to that, right? So I don't know about if that's done. Let's just randomly type stuff. It refresh whenever you save just one file. Or let's pretend this is blank. It always seems to ref the desktop icons always refresh. It's like other desktop environments have done it before and they don't have that issue. Even if it's just one character, refreshes it. But it's nothing. And that's never happened before. Well, I mean, that's that's like an unnecessary thing. It's like, why the heck, say if I were to move my mouse, why the heck would you re-render the whole screen just for one little mouse movement? Or say if I were to drag this over here, you wouldn't... It's not ideal to re-render the whole screen. And even when you delete stuff, it's just one thing. The second, and probably the big, well, and that was only the second thing. The biggest thing is, why is this included? Somebody explain me this. Actually, you guys can do this, so, in the comments below. So, if you'd like to explain why this is included, maybe there's some partnership, which is most likely why. I hope that partnership ends, by the way. Um, it's like, seriously, why is that got to be included? Why? And the least thing that doesn't really bug me about Ubuntu is that, well, yeah, really, the system requirements, um, even though it's, I guess, faster than Windows, like, some just tells me that hey, uh, Linux distributions tend to be better than Windows performance-wise, even if it's like having higher specs, it's relative. Well, yeah. I mean, if you look at the Windows 10 specifications, let's bring that up. It's like it requires two gigs of RAM, right? So, system requirements, what will you, what you need? Well, let's get it from Microsoft's official website. Uh, here we go. So, um, yes, you see that you need a 1 gig, um, for 64-bit, and in this case, I would be installing a 64-bit version of Windows, let's just say. Even though I'm not going to do that anytime soon, it looks like. Um, it requires 2 gigabytes. No way would I install a 32-bit version on 64-bit hardware. That doesn't make any sense to me. And, yes, you need 1 gigahertz CPU. Or faster CPU. Graphics card, I'm not too concerned about that, but that should work. Display, do you really think anybody uses an 800 by 600 display nowadays? So at least 1024 by 760 in my opinion. And we have like hard drive, uh, at least 20 gigs for 64 bit OS. And if we go to Ubuntu.com to look at Ubuntu specifications, uh, let's download, we're using the this version. No, 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 no. I didn't mean that. I just meant to like, this Yes, yeah, so what the four gigabytes of system memory? Are you kidding me? Dang, that's like this is the recommended requirements. I don't know if that's actually the bare minimum. Let's let's test that theory out with two tabs in Firefox. Is it really using four gigs of system memory? Uh, no, again, this is what recommended system requirements. Right there, right here. So, yeah, they're relatively higher than Windows 10. So it's like 25 gigs of free hard drive space. It's not that too much of an increase. Four gigs of system RAM. That that's different than what I've recalled. 
Except the system is not using two gigs of RAM, of actual RAM. This is just um, recommended though. And a two gigahertz dual core processor or better. Now here it just says like a gigahertz or faster processor or system on ch on a chip. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, this is a, and the same would be applicable to here because it says so. <laughs> yeah, well, if we go look at the Fedora, uh, Fedora system requirements, I'm not gonna get into that, um, right now, but later on in the video, we we'll get into that. And so, um, the system is performing quite well if we were to close out Firefox. Um, with this program running in the background, it's around one and a half gigabytes of RAM is being used. Um, so it's not that bad, really. And it still performs pretty decently. Sure, there may be performance hiccups when I'm, like, like running a lot of stuff. And so on. And it probably performed better on that computer, that one. But, yeah, it's a nice little Linux distribution. So, yeah. Um, so, and let's go to the installer interface. And we got some stuff in the trash, and let's just empty this trash real quick. So, the installer interface, it's in the window, which is nice. And why I mention this, uh, you'll find out later on. So we can just continue, it's nice and easy, we go through a step-by-step -step process, and for the most part, hey guys, I'm back again, and for some reason, actually, not for some reason, storage just ran out of, storage just, it, I ran out of storage on my phone, okay, I seriously gotta get an actual camera. One of these days. Oh, well, so, um, so now, another thing I should have mentioned before is the lifespan of, um, these two distributions. Ubuntu has long-term support releases that are supported up to five years. The current one at the time of this video is Ubuntu 18.04.3. The current latest version is 19.04, which will only be supported for 9 months. Uh, and Fedora, the way it goes is that, um, it's, so right now, and we are on Fedora 30, right? Fedora 29 is being supported. When Fedora 31 is released, Fedora 29 will have its support dropped. That's how it goes. When Fedora 32 is released, Fedora 30 will be unsupported. So that's how it goes. It may not even be a year of support, and Fedora does not have any long-term support releases. Also, I believe Fedora's specs are, um, hold on a sec. The system requirements, anyway. So, according to here, oh, two gigs, um, yeah, I get it from here. So, you need at least, um, one gigahertz, a one gigahertz processor, one gig of RAM, and ten gigs of hard drive space. But, oh, that's an okay. Fedora 30, uh, installation guide. So, it's like... I mean, so it hmm. I should say somewhere. I mean, this is requirements like around, I guess, one gig, one gigahertz processor. Um, around there. So, according to here, you need a one gigahertz processor. They 
It's like a man to get it. Um, 2 gigs of dual core, 2 gigs of RAM, 15 gigs of hard drive space, and yeah. So, that's according to this source. Um, also, another thing that may um, make Ubuntu have an advantage over Fedora in this scenario is that, like I said, in the earlier portion of the video, this is USB 2. <sighs> I had to switch there. While the other flash drive is USB 1. So, yeah. Just a little note there. Mm -hmm. And the battery drains very quickly. I doubt we have two hours left. I doubt it. So, yeah, we can also install GIMP on here, which is what I use to just create my own channel out. Um, so, yeah. So, this is fairly basic. A fairly basic review, comparing two distros to one another. And... Um, what else should I mention? Um, there's not much really to mention. Oh yeah, the installer. So if we click on the installer, it takes a bit of time to load, of course. Um, probably the Ubuntu installer may have been loaded up by now. But the installer here is a bit different. It's actually, um, well... It's actually full screen and not in a window. It's full screen like this. Like you have this top, the top bar. You can click continue just like the uh the. Oops, took some pictures. Um, so just like the keyboard add and so on. And then you can do the installation process and how however steps you want. Usually I just go with the discs first, and then once that's done. Yeah, then I just do the rest. Let's actually quit out of here. Cancel. Just click done. Then you can click begin installation, and then you have more steps, and then there you go. Then the thing is installed. You can, and yeah, it's a bit more complicated, I guess, for the for this for the for Fedora Fedora's installer, sorry, than Ubuntu's installer because you don't. There's no minimal installation option there's no install alongside whatever coming OS you have option you got to do that all manually anyways so yep so I'd say this is a fairly basic review of Ubuntu and Fedora comparing Ubuntu and Fedora with each other so yep um, overall that's pretty much it that's gonna be it that for today and yep so, yep, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. That's right, I, I just remembered something. Before I go, um, Ubuntu, starting with 18.10, it's 64-bit only. While with Fedora, it's been a bit longer because you have either 32-bit or 64-bit. However, though, starting 31, and that's already out in beta right now. Let's just move that to the side there. Apparently, um, because, let's bring up an article, actually, from Fedora Magazine. Um, yeah, because in Fedora 31, um, the i686 architecture, or the 32-bit architecture, is going to be dropped. And, yeah, essentially, according to this article here, it pretty much says, let me read it here. The i the i six eighty six architecture essentially ended community support with the Fedora twenty seven release. Unfortunately, there are not enough members of the community willing to do the work to maintain the architecture. Don't worry, though. Fedora is not dropping all thirty two bit packages. Many i six eighty six packages are still being built. Yada yada yada. However, though, starting Ubuntu nineteen point ten, they're gonna drop all 
64-bit, 32-bit packages, unfortunately. So, while Fedora, it says here they plan to support 32-bit packages, which, well, for some applications, they it's required they depend on 32-bit packages because, you know, because Wine and even Steam, um, yeah. So I get the news. Um, yeah. Because it's um, gonna. It's gonna drop 32 bit packages, and yeah. So, what does it say here? Oh, it's almost going to be launched, huh? Okay, well, yeah. So, thirty-two bit packages packages may be dropped or something. I'm now actually a bit unsure now, but just to be on the safe side, um, yeah, packages thirty-two bit packages are going to be dropped while on the same well similar story on Fedora. Starting in thirty-one, you cannot um. There's no more 32-bit ISO anymore. It's just completely 64-bit only. And yet Linux was known essentially for, um, like, running on older hardware. And don't worry, there are plenty of other distributions out there to, like, um, like, to migrate to. Well, I gotta show you something. Yes, this is gonna be a legal download. No. I know it's Windows 10, but we're gonna, um, uh, we're not actually gonna download it. I'm just gonna show you something. And yes, this is legal. You still need to buy a party key in order for you to comply with the license agreement, though. That's the thing. So, we need the license agreement, folks, even though I'm kind of gonna be contradicting myself because I did read it for you. So, boom. It still has a 32-bit download. Well, that's because we can argue with the fact that Windows is popular, so... That's probably why. Oh, well. That's not my concern for now. This is 64-bit hardware anyway. So... Yeah. That's the thing. <clears throat> so, yep. I also thought I'd mention that as well. So, yep. I'll see you guys in the next video. Or even live stream, who knows? I'll just do. Oh well, never mind about that. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.